Okay, so let's start our discussion. Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good night, good evening, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever time zone you are. <laughs> um, this is this is chapter eleven of the introduction to statistical learning, and the topic is survival analysis. Okay, so let's get cooking. So uh, the learning objectives for this chapter is first of all understand what is the definition of a sensor data, which is vital to understand, you know, what we're going to discuss as survival analysis. Um, also, we are going to uh, take a peek at what is a Kaplan-Meier, okay? Uh, it says survival curve, but I found that the better term for the clap, Kaplan-Meier is basically a curve, okay? It's a, it's a plot. And you will see why, okay? Uh, sometimes it's for survival, and sometimes you can use it for the hazard, okay? Which is kind of the inverse of the survival. Then we're going to be talking about uh, grouping. Grouping those, those rates, uh, usually you want to find out how the survival rates are uh, defined by different groups, let's say gender, or let's say in the medical you know, uh, field, uh, sometimes you want to see what is, the, what is the impact in the survival rate for let's say a deficiency in some vitamin or uh, the effect of, for example, a vaccine, okay? So, and one of the things that we do is what is called the long rank test. And you will see that it's kind of familiar with something that we have, uh, you know, seen in other, in other chapters. Uh, it's related to the chi-square, the chi-square test, okay? When you have two groups and you want to see if, they're sim if, if they are similar or different and you do this uh, statistical test. I believe that we have enough material, at least for this, you know, for this uh, instance, to cover all those three. And, and I'm going to be a little bit slow because this is a topic that usually you don't, you know, you, you don't uh, see that, that often in, in, in data science. Then for the next uh, session, uh, we're going to, to discuss a little bit about the hazard function which is a preamble to the hazard ratio, and then the Cox proportional hazards. Uh, it's interesting that in, in the book, they talk about that, but I took the back more theoretically. I want to talk it more, you know, as pragmatic as, as, as we, can, we can see. So the Cox proportional hazards, what is it is, is a, a type of multivariate uh, regression. Now we have seen that in, remember in chapter three, when we talk about linear regression and also uh, multivariate, multiple uh, linear regression. Well, Cox is a modification of that, okay? It's a regression. But then you're going to see uh, several uh, covariates, okay? That's how they call several regressors, several predictors on how they impact the survival, you know, the, the survival, and in this case, the time. Then uh, we will talk a little bit about the shrinkage. Uh, methods to regularize the Cox model because since it's a regression, uh, remember that you know when we talk about the the multicollinearity issue, uh, sometimes some of those covariates or predictors are going to be related to one another. So one of the things that we can do to uh, uh, ameliorate uh, ameliorate that impact is by shrinkage. And you remember the lasso, the ridge elastic net, all those methods, uh, they could apply also, uh, modify to the Cox model. And then the last is the generalized uh, AUC, area under the curve, right? For a survival model to see how accurate uh, our model is. Okay. Get ready? Ready? <laughs> Please, if you have any questions, you know, interrupt me because uh, I had a lot of questions. In, in, in this one, okay, I had to do my research. Okay, so 
Let's talk about survival or what is really sensor data. So when we talk about survival analysis, what really the, the, the general term of survival analysis is really time to event. In other words, we have a particular starting point, right? Uh, picture yourself that you're doing, a, you're doing a study, okay? And you are doing a study with certain, you know, uh, certain persons, right? And you're going to start that study at a, at a certain time, and then you're going to finish it at a certain time too, okay? Picture that, you know, in, in your mind. So what is going to happen is, for example, if you are, if you are uh, uh, studying uh, patients, okay? Patients that have been diagnosed with a terminal disease. Uh, pick one, uh, cancer. Uh, for example, okay, that's the most you know common uh, terminal disease that we that we can picture. So, in the study, let's say that you do a study for five years. Okay, so at point zero, hopefully, right at point zero, all your patients are going to be alive. Okay, they have been diagnosed with cancer, but they are alive. Then, you know. In the first year, for example, let's take this span, the first year. Well, maybe one of your patients uh, dies, okay, within that, that, that period. So that's going to be and the, the event that you are studying, you know, the time to event. So for that particular patient in that year, you're going to, you know, mark that that patient died. Then the second year, third year, and so forth. When you finish the study, the five-year study, you're going to have some patients that unfortunately didn't make it, right? Okay, that, you know, they, they, they pass away. But then you're going to see that there are other that survive, you know, after that time. Those that are still alive when you finish the study, those are the sensor uh, data because once you finish, right, you know, your, your, your basic, uh, you know, uh, capital T, that's your T, you know, your, your, your span of the study. Um, after that, you don't know what happened uh, to that patient. Also, you could have, you know, in, a re in the real world, right, you could have a patient that you lost contact with, okay, in the study. Remember that you are not with them all the time, okay? You do this periodically. So sometimes they, they come to a checkup, you know, you talk to them, et cetera, you know, to try to gather as much information as possible. But let's say that that person moved and didn't, you know, leave a forward address. So when you go there, you're going to find, you know, uh, the patient. So that patient also could be sensor within, right? Within that period. Also, that's called, you know, and we're going to, you know, see it. That's called in interval uh, sensory. So the example that I gave, in terms of, you know, starting uh, at, 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 you know, T zero, and then with the five years, that's right. What is called right sensory because you know when you started. Okay, you know your left, your left side. What you don't know for some patients is your right side. Okay, you know what happened after after that. Then there is a case, okay, and I had to, you know, I had to research it because, you know, it's not easy to uh, picture it. But there's a case when you could have left sensor uh, data. Okay, you can have uh, usually the the survival analysis deal with right sensor. Okay, and that's easy to understand. But then there's what is called a left sensor data. And in this study, okay, this is the example that I, that I found. This is a study about, uh, you know, pregnancy, uh, a woman pregnancy, okay? So the left sensor happens when you start your study, okay? And the study is, in this case, is for 250 days, okay? That's the mark, right? 250 days. And you're going to study, you know, uh, women that are pregnant, and eventually, you know, they're going to, you know, that they're, they're, they're going to get out of that, 
of, of, of that pregnancy, right? Because you know they're going to have a baby. So in that case, um, in the left sensor, sometimes you get someone, okay, that you don't know when they got pregnant. Okay, you know that they gave birth at certain times, and that's the event, but you don't know when the pregnancy happened. Okay, and that's a, a sample of what is called left sensor. It's not very typical, okay, but it can happen. And then we talk a little bit about the interval sensor, right? The ones that are, you know, in, in, in between that sometimes, you know, you lost contact, etc. So that could be a type of interval sensor, okay? Everyone with me there? Yes, uh -huh. just, something, just something. Yeah, that, that's all uh, clear, fantastic. So it's when okay. uh, you basically uh, l uh, lost the data of your patients. So right. like for, for, for pregnant women, you, you think from zero to 250, this is your uh, time frame. So, mm -hmm. You for some women, you know, when they give birth, but right. you don't know exactly. So you suppose that that would be in that um, time mm -hmm. because they have given birth at two fifty, at two fifty stage. Mm, right. But when when you talk about um, uh, that for um like terminal illness such as cancer mm -hmm. you have just right sensoring correct yes because when when the patient dies is that that you he uh, in some senses go out of the the study because uh Mm -hmm. He has died. Right. Is that right? So you have the event of death. Yes. Within your time frame, if yeah. you know your start date, okay, that you know the status of your start date, for example, that all your, you know, your, your patients are alive, then what is going to happen is throughout that time, there are going to be people that are going to, you know, reach that event okay another example let's let's not you know give that you know that uh that that example which is kind of you know uh you know is 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 is, is sometimes not easy to talk let's say that you're studying you're studying uh customers customers that for some reason they leave you know uh, a subscription okay that you you are in a business of magazines and you usually, okay, you you have people that subscribe to that, uh, you know, to that service, right? And some people cancel, okay, their, their their subscription. So the event that you are trying to study is the cancellation, right? That's the time to event. So let's say that you have, let's say, a cohort, right? A cohort of fifty uh, customers, okay, and all of them are subscribed. So you know, you know, you don't have an uncertainty on, you know, the status when they start, okay? The left censoring is when you don't know the status, you know, when they start. For example, they cancel before, before, you know, you start the study. So you don't know that, okay? You know that maybe maybe when they came back, then, okay, they re-entered the study, right? But you don't know what happened, you know, before. That's the left sensory. But let's talk about the right sensory because right sensory is the most common one. So you start, okay, with all your customers, 50 customers, and then let's say that you do it for a year, okay? And you are going to track how many of these customers, the 50 customers are still subscribed by month, okay? So for example, you start in January, at the end of January, okay? You check, okay, I, I uh, two, two customers left, okay? The, the subscription, okay? So that's the event that I want to, that, that I want to mark, okay? At the end of the year, you're going to have X amount of customers that left the, the, the subscription, but then there will be others that are still there, okay? That's your sensor data. 
That's your sensor data because you stop your study at that time. Okay, you stop your study and then you don't know what happened after that. You don't know what happened. Is that any more clear now <laughs> with that example? The right sensoring? Okay, so those, those that are left, okay, they're going to impact uh, this study. Because for example, you could say, okay, uh, picture picture your data set, okay, of the of those of those customers. So you have dates, right? You have a customer ID. You have a subscription, you know, because you have different products, right? You, you can have a subscription. Let, let, let's be simple. Let's pick one, okay? Uh, Sports uh, Illustrated, <laughs> okay? Sport Illustrated. So you're going to have some dates, you know, that, that date that, you know, happened the cancellation, the cancellation date, you're going to have some customers that are going to have a cancellation date. But the ones that are still active, they don't have a cancellation date, okay? Because they are still active. So regularly, if you don't take account those, uh, you know, those customers that are active that they don't have a cancellation then it reflects as a missing value in that, in that feature. Okay, and you could say, okay, what I'm going to do with the missing values, I could delete them. Okay, I could make an assumption, okay, about it, you know, impute them, etc. What survival analysis or the time to event allows us is to deal with that missing value in the cancellation date. So eventually, what we're going to do because it's only a year, you're going to impute them with the last date of your study, but those dates are going to be sensor. In other words, you need another status there. Something in that data set that's going to say, okay, this one reached the event, this one didn't, didn't reach the event. And that's the sensor data. Better now? <laughs> okay, so basically I'm, I'm sensoring. Uh -huh. I'm sensoring that part of data because I don't need it. I'm, I'm not taking consideration of that data. Okay, I'm you are, the survival analysis allows you to use that data, to use that data in your data set, okay? Because if you don't do the time event and survival analysis, there are going to be those cancellation dates of the customers that are active, mm -hmm. they won't have a cancellation date, okay? At the end, at the end of the study. So what you have to do is, okay, I'm going to arbitrarily, you know, put a date there, okay? Because you have to work with, with dates, you know, with time spans, right? Arbitrarily, but then I'm going to provide the data set another feature that is going to say that those uh, cost, as the customers, they are censored, okay? They have a, a, a particular status uh, to it. So it's another feature that you have to add there, mm -hmm. okay? So probably in the examples, maybe it will be, you know, uh, clear. But remember, right censoring is when you know when you start. Okay, that's vital. You know, you, you have to know the status of those customers, of those patients, when you start your, your study. Okay? Okay, so I already gave you some other examples on, on survival or time to event. Some of the uh, examples are, for example, after a surgery of a, of a, you know, of a person. Is the, after that, you know, is there, you know, is if there a time, you know, that we want to study, you know, in terms of if the surgery was successful or not? Okay. The example that I gave about the customers, you know, this is very, uh, you know, you 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 are going to see more of the of this uh, theory applied to uh, to churning, okay, which is the cancellation of the relationship of the customer with the company. Also, our reliability studies. Okay, the time for a machine to uh, break, to malfunction. Okay, so those are some of the applications that we can see in the uh, in the in the survival or time to event uh, uh, analysis. Okay. Okay, so uh, I already talked to this. You know, some of the survival analysis, you know, synonyms that we can find out the fields are reliability, duration analysis, event time to event, okay? 
So uh, I I try to find uh, the, in the in stack quest. I try to find you know the some of the survive analysis. I, I couldn't. Okay. Apparently, uh, uh, Josh, you know, uh, uh, John, John, John Stammer, uh, uh, he hasn't he has he hasn't done any any videos there. Okay. But I found this guy. Okay. It's called Set Statistics. And it's, it's unfortunate that uh, he has only four uh, videos <laughs> right now because you know videos take you know some time, especially the quality that they have. Uh, it takes some time, you know, to to you know prepare the, the, this this video, this product. Mm -hmm. And they only have until four. You know, it's a series of eight. But at least you know I will you know recommend that you you know uh, go go through them. Okay, uh, yeah. Okay, so you you have you have seen him, yeah. He has a regression. Okay, it's a, it's like a stack quest, you know, but you know with this guy. <laughs> so uh, yeah, but that, they're they're really they're really good. Okay, and uh, survival analysis because he has a lot of probability uh, theory, you know, behind it. Uh, sometimes it's not that you know easy easy to grasp, but uh, you know these guys really try to make her you know simpler simpler to you know, to, to normal people, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, ch check it out. Uh, the the link, let me see if I can check the link here. Okay, let me go here. Uh, so it's in the, so it will appear here. Okay, let, put, let me put in the chat. Okay, here we go. Okay, though. so uh, we talk about sensor data. I hope that you are a little bit more clear. Is when that survival time is incomplete. In other words, you finish your study, and there are, you know, points in that in that study, there could be observations that they don't reach that event, Wh whatever whatever it, the, the, the event is. Uh, you know, death, uh, churn, uh, equipment malfunction, all that. And some of the examples that could have you know that impact apart from the you know finishing the study is that there's a loss to follow up some patients for example in our first uh, 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 simulation some patients could withdraw from the study okay that's their you know that's their prerogative and no event or outcome by end of fixed study period so you can have different uh, causes for you know that example of sensor data but they are all you know, we're going to deal all with the right sensor because that's, a, that's the most frequent one. Left sensoring and turbine sensoring are kind of a, a rare, rare, you know, rare, rare birds. Okay. Okay, so let's go. You know, it, it, it usually I combine the theory, as you can see, I combine the theory with the labs. Okay, because usually when we have the theory, we have some, some questions, some doubts, and then when you see it in the practical, you know, in the, in the practice, the praxis, then some of the, you know, some of those uh, doubts could be uh, uh, clear. So um, uh, the book, okay, the book uh, uses uh, this uh, data set. It's called the Brain Cancer uh, data set, and the Brain Cancer data set is a collection of 88, 88 patients. Uh, and this one, let me give you the whole, you know the whole story, okay? Uh, in this one, our investigation in that data set was uh, studying the survival times, right? For patients with primary brain tumors, which are undergoing a, you know, a, chemothe a chemotherapy, right? A radiation a method. In that case is a stereotactic, okay, method. So. I mean, I mean, if if you are, I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't research that, but it's kind of a chemotherapy there. So some of the uh, features that are going to have in this data set is, for example, uh, the gender, right? They're going to have a diagnosis, and there's you know different diagnoses: uh, meningioma, H, Hg glioma, Lg glioma, so far. Then the location of the tumor, okay infratentorial or supratentorial. Then you have, let me check this, okay, just to make sure that I give you the right information. You have something called CHI, which is the Karnofsky index, okay, which is related to this type of, uh, 
the types of therapy. Then you have the method of the therapy, what is called the STERI, okay? You have SR, SRS or SRT. Then can you see the status there? Okay, because that's an important, these are very important for survival analysis. You have the status and the status is zero means, okay? And I can check it out here. As uh, zero, let me put it, okay, I know where it is, okay? Okay, I have it here. Zero, the status means that uh, if the patient is still alive. So zero means that is yes, okay? And no is that he didn't survive. So no will be, the one will be the event and zero will be the ones that, you know, were still alive. So that points to the sensor, to the sensor data, the ones that have zero, okay? And of course, the time, right? The time uh, to the event or to the, you know, end of the, of the study, okay? Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about, you know, uh, doing a, a skim, a skim function from the skimmer package. Uh, we have, from this data set, we have four, uh, four uh, categorical uh, uh, features, right? Which are sex, diagnosis, uh, the location, and the, the stereo, the, 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 the treatment, uh, like that. And you can see more or less the distribution of them. 45 for female, 43 for male. Uh, the SRT is the one method that is most common than the SRS and all that. Then you have four numeric uh, features, right? The Karnofsky index, the GTP status, of course, okay? Uh, which is, you know, basically it's a categorical one. It just, you know, numeric here, but status is zero or one. Zero is that they survive. One is that they, they didn't survive. So how many? Uh, on this study, uh, uh, survive the, the study. In this case, if you count the status, uh, the zero means 53. So 53 uh, survive the, uh, the, the, the treatment. And 35 were one. So 35 are the ones that, you know, uh, uh, reached the event that we're studying. Okay, good. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, so we're going to be discussing now the what is called the kaplan mayer survival curve, curve. And the, the book gives you the, the function for uh, plotting, plotting, constructing, this uh, kaplan mayer curve. And um, what, what, is, what, is, what is telling you, what is telling you this uh, curve is at a certain time, okay? Let's pick, uh, let's pick 40 months, for example. So at 40 months, you are going to have an intersect here, right? Okay? And if you go to the Y, okay, with 40 months, you're going to see that you know, estimating you have about 57, 58% of your original group are surviving at that time, okay? So in this case, what the, this curve is telling us is that at each specific, right? Each specific interval, you can see how many of those uh, patients were still alive, okay? And it's an estimation, right? Because uh, as you can see, the curve is kind of jacket. It's kind of a ladder, you know, uh, thing. So usually what happened is, and I found this uh, uh, site that explains exactly how this curve is calculated, which is not, you know, uh, unfortunately it's, it's not in the book, okay? So let me give you, so we can, you know, be on the same page. Let me give you that link. Okay. So in this one, like in the, like in the brain cancer, 
uh, here, uh, there's, there's patients that are, you know, undergoing chemotherapy, but the event, you know, that we're trying to study is the effect of surgery uh, before and after, okay? Before the surgery and after the surgery, okay? And you have all this, you know, all this, all this, all this data. So the month of death, okay, in this study is for this uh, patient, okay, he survived eight months, okay? And for this patient, he survived 12 months. Here in the month of last contacts, that's a sensor. That's, the, that's your sensor uh, data. So for the month of last contact, it was also eight also. Okay. For another patient, it was 20. Finally, it was 32. And for another, it was 40. So this table, you're going to convert it to this table, which is kind of a life table. Okay. So for month zero, which is our start of the study, uh, you're going to have everyone alive. So the survivor probability there is one. Okay. So if we look are you, uh, our, our graph, if we will we'll plot that, that, uh, that point, it will be here, okay? Zero, and you have probability of one because everyone was, you know, was alive. Then on month eight, right, you have one person that uh, uh, died, right? The reached a time, time event, and one person that is censored, okay? Because, you know, you lost contact with it. And then when you do the math, you're going to see that the probability is 0.9 now, okay? One divided by 10, right? <laughs> okay, 0.1. Then you continue to do this table and you're going to get all this, you know, survivor probabilities. That's your kaplan uh curve. So you have time at the, at the x-axis and you have uh, a probability, okay? An estimation of the probability of the people that are still, uh, that haven't reached that, that event yet. So in this case, the kaplan mayer what he's telling us is at a certain point of time, how many people or how many uh, persons have, you know, have survived that event? In other words, they haven't reached that event yet. Okay, good. Okay, so. That's basically, you know, the kaplan mayer but it gets a little bit, you know, more interesting here because now what we want to do is compare uh, different, different groups, okay? Because one of the purposes for you doing the survival analysis is to try to compare uh, what is the effect of the groups within the survival curve. So remember that in this survival curve, they were all, you know, there was no certification or grouping or anything. It's just, you know, your original traditional curve. Then in this one, we're going to split, right? We're going to split that curve by gender, by, by sex. You know, that's the, that's the feature, but it's, it's gender. And in this case, what you see is that the, the reddish one, okay? The reddish curve corresponds to the, 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 the persons that are female, okay? The bluish one are the persons that are male. So just looking at that graph, what, what, what is your instinct telling you there? Can I say that a group has a better survival uh, rate than other groups or not? Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah, that's a better survival curve. Yeah, the second man uh -huh. have a better survival curve than men. Mm -hmm. Okay, for, so, so for example, let's take 20, right? 20, uh, uh, at 20 months, okay, from, from zero. At 20 months, you have that the survival uh, probability according to this curve is here, right? Which could be around uh, 75, 74, Okay, give or take. But then here in the males, you have a lower one. So just comparing that gap, 
okay, between the curves, it tells you more or less, you know, that it's indicating that it has some probability, you know, a higher probability of survival than other. Uh, also, you can group it by any variant, you know, covariate that, that you want. For example, the, the methodology that they're, they're using for the chemotherapy, the stereo or one. You can also use and see if one method is more effective than the other, okay? But guess what? It doesn't end there, <laughs> okay? Because now, even though we can see that gap, right? We have to do a test, okay? Yeah. Right? <laughs> right. You're right. Yeah, there's always a test somewhere. <laughs> there's always a test somewhere. <laughs> because this, this KM curve is, right. the da- is the data. This, this stair-stepping right. is from your Excel spreadsheet, literally. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, that's a good observation, Kim. Uh, the Kaplan-Mayer is what is called a non-parametric uh, uh, statistic, okay? Uh, here, there's no mean, there's no variance, standard deviation or anything like that. Okay, so there's no parameters here. Only is you're plotting the, the results from the data. The data is the only parameter that you're considering here. Okay, when we go to hazard function, then that's going to be uh, parametric because you need a distribution to calculate your, you know, your, uh, what is called your PDFs. Okay, probability, density functions, etc. Okay, so let's go to the test. And the test is basically what, we, what we're going to see later is going to be a log rank uh, test, okay? So in this package, the surf uh, minor package, uh, it gives you already uh, the test in the form of a p-value, okay? So the test that we're doing is when you have two groups, right? You have two groups, you have male, you have female. So the test is, is there is, the neural hypothesis is, is there a significant difference between the survival probability of the females versus the males? Okay, if it is statistically significant, because we know by the curve that there's a gap. Right, you know that that's that's obvious there, but is it statistically significant? In other words, that you can say with a lot of, you know, of assurance that that difference is, you know, is significant. So in this case, okay, we're going to have a little bit of, you know, of uh, tabulation here. So for example, in time zero. Time zero, I'm, I'm talking about that table, number asterisk, okay? In that time zero, you have 45 females and 43 males that are alive. They have not reached the event yet, okay? When you go to 20, now, according to your study, to your data, you have 26 that they're still alive and 22 males that are still alive, okay? And so on for 40, for 60, and for 80. When you reach 80, you see that females, there are no more females, okay? They pass away, and there's still one male. So with this table, what you're going to do is that you're going to do what is called a chi-square, okay? A chi-square test. And the chi-square, what it does is that you get the observed, these are the observed uh, data that you have, and then you compare it with the expected. Okay, with the expected uh, uh, number uh, that you are, you know, that 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 that, 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 that you're dealing with, depending, right, on the numbers on, on the numbers of your uh, of your data. Okay, you compare it to that, and then you have different different ratios on the on the on the chi square. If that number, the chi square goes beyond what is called the 0 0.05 limit, okay? Because, you know, it's, it's a curve. The chi-square, you know, will be a distribution with a curve. If it goes beyond the mark of 0 0.05, that means that the, the test is telling you that those groups are significantly different, okay? If it goes within the 0 0.05 um, or more, then you can say that you don't have enough evidence to 
reject that no hypothesis. In other words, you cannot say that they're significantly different, okay? So in a nutshell, the chi-square test will tell you the p-value. And the p-value in this case is 0.23. So 0.23 is greater than 0 0.05, right? Okay, so is within the area where you cannot reject that no hypothesis. So in other words, even though we are notice, we notice that there's a gap between the groups, statistically, you know, we cannot say that those groups are different. Okay, we don't have enough uh, uh, evidence uh, to say that. Okay. Everyone with me? And graphically, you can see that there is, uh, you know, these are the uh, interval, you know, uh, confidence of intervals. So for example, you can picture this as two distributions, okay? The, the groups, two distributions. What happens is that the distributions, they share some points within them, okay? You can see, you know, in the, in the graph, you can see if you can follow my mouse, you can see that there's this area that it has like a darker color, okay? Those points are, you know, are, uh, are, are mixed, are mixed between those groups. In other words, they share uh, those, those uh, you know, th th those, those points, those con uh, interval, uh, confidence of interval points, okay? So what's happening is that the statistic is telling you that there's not enough separation, okay, from those confidence intervals to say that those groups are statistically different, okay? Good. Questions, questions. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know that I would <laughs> take this view to a client. The, the, the frequentist assumptions are pretty, right. Um, right. pretty, pretty severe. Mm -hmm. um, but there, there are parametric approaches that you'll get to eventually that right. do a better job of breaking out the competing risks or con 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 the contributing mm -hmm. factors. Um, so so I, I move quickly past this. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, but remember, uh, a lot of, you know, the, the, the medical studies and all that, you know, uses this methodology. Remember this, okay? Yeah, I, I think the newer stuff in epidemiology looks more towards the Bayes approach Bayesian. and, and yeah. doesn't use hypothesis testing. Right. Um, but but yeah, I, I guess for the purposes of this book, um, mm -hmm. yeah, this 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 is an approach that has been taught for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, at least we know that it you know uh, what what it means. Okay. That that that's the that's the main main reason you know to discuss yeah. it. That you know yeah. what it means, and of course you know, uh, like Jim says, you know there are other methodologies. Uh, parametric and also Bayesian, okay, which are uh, uh, you know having more more acceptance, okay, in you know in in, in any in any field. Yeah. Okay. So let's keep going. Here we go. Okay. So uh, it's eleven forty three. Um, these are you know I, I'm going to talk a little bit about, uh, about it, but we need to understand a little more about hazard. Uh, uh, the hazard function, okay? And that's something that I still, you know, I have to be honest, I'm, I'm, I'm still working on that because there's a lot of, uh, uh, there's, a lot of there's a lot of calculus there, okay? <laughs> because the hazard function is really a limit, <laughs> okay? It's, it's, it's a limit because it's, it's kind of the inverse, right? We're talking about survival, right? But the hazard is, okay, I want to know the time, right? The time when the event occurred. Right, because that gives me more information, you know, for my, you know, for 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 my conclusions, give more information than just the probability of survival. Okay, so, uh, but let's give you, you know, in the in the minutes that we have left, uh, I'll give you just a preview of what this Cox uh, proportional hazards model, which, if you go back, remember to the logistic regression uh, models, okay, that we talk about uh, odd ratios, for example. Okay, what something something similar is happening here. Okay, so uh, the Cox, 
like I said, you know, is uh, let me let me put this here, okay? Because it's okay, okay. So the the Cox proportional hazard model is essentially a regression model, right? Uh, an investigate association between the survival time of patients and one or more predictors. In the Kaplan, as you saw, we only had, in that case, right, we only had uh, certain parameters. We had the time, we had the status, right, the sensor, not sensor, and then we had certain, certain, certain covariates, in that case, the gender. Uh, here, what we want to do is create a model that we, that we can use as prediction. Okay, as as as, as regressions uh, usually do. So the purpose of this model, you know, I'm going to read about this, is to evaluate simultaneously the effect of several factors. Okay, now we we can, you know, get into the mix, uh, different factors, ju not not just the gender, but also, you know, all the covariates that we have we have in the data set. So it allows to examine how specific factors influence the rate of a particular uh, event happening. For example, the infection, death, or some factor. And this rate is commonly referred as the hazard rate. Okay, remember hazard rate, no hazard, hazard rate. In other words, there's a there's a log somewhere, right? You know, there's a difference uh, there. So the predictive variables or factors are usually termed covariates in this, you know, in this. Uh, in this uh, field. And the function that you're going to use uh, for the survival package is the Cox pH, okay? The Cox pH, which gives you, is like the LM or the GLM in, in you know, general uh, regression. And it does basically the same. In terms of formulation, it's basically the same. You have your serve, you know, uh, object, right? We incorporate the time and the status. Then you have the covariate, which is gender. You have your data, and you have your function, which is the uh, the, the Cox uh, pH. And then with the summary, you can determine, right? You can determine uh, how significant, right? Those uh, those covariates are, and because this is a categorical variable, remember the categorical. What happened? That, for example, if you have uh, two a binary a binary component. One of them is not going to show in this summary. Remember that one in, in logistic regression? Okay, that you have a base. In other words, you have a base and then you have a comparison, okay, coefficient that compares, you know, if it is positive, you know, it moves, you know, toward that, you know, uh, uh, you know, it's uh, directly proportional to that. If it's negative, that is inverse proportional. So in this case, as we saw in that, you know, in that plot, the Kaplan Mayer, uh, the you know the factors uh, of sex of gender, the males have a coefficient of 0.4. That means that using the log, right, because it's a hazard ratio, using the log, you can exponentiate a half 1.5. And that 1.5, what it means is that males have a 1.5 more probability to reach the event than uh, the females, okay? But as we know, you have to take it with a grain of salt because you have that p-value, okay? And the p-value is in the area of uh, not significant. So you have to be careful with this, okay? Because what it tells you is that that uh, component, okay, that coefficient is passing through one, okay? And one, that means that it's not, it's not significant, okay? It's just like the zero in the regression, right? And if you take a log of one, you get your, you get your zero, okay? And you have certain things called concordance. Uh, concordance, the concordant index is how well, uh, it's like the, it's like an analog of R square, okay, for regression, but concordance index, what it tells is how well, the you know this model is dealing with the associations between the predictors and the outcomes okay the higher the concordant index the better the model can you know explain that just that the r square explains the variance you know of of those uh predictors versus the outcome and you have also your you know uh test the likelihood tags etc which are pointing that this model 
taking 0 0.05 as your reference, this model is not uh, statistically significant. Okay. So just to finish here, we took only gender, right? As you as our predictor. So in this one, we're going to put them all in the in the you know in, in the mix, okay, with the with the period. So as regression, right? If you if you do the, the period, then you get all your predictors, and this is your uh, your summary the summary table, okay. And you can see that some of them, uh, depending on the p-value, some of them are highly significant than others. For example, this location, so Pratintorio, uh, is 0.5, okay. So that means that there's really no difference between the intra and the supra because it's comparing to to the base of that category, okay? And here, because we put all the predictors to mix, our concordance has risen. So we have a better model, you know, according to that index of 0.794, and then the p-values are very low. So that means that the model, you know, is uh, statistically significant, okay? Any questions? Good. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Good. Yep. Okay. So I, I, I would like to, uh, you know, next time that we meet, I would like to uh, explain a little bit about the hazard function, because then you have a better picture of what is the hazard ratio, and then, you know, do do a, more, a, a clear discussion of the of the Cox proportional methods. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Jim. Yes. You were saying, yeah. yeah. No, that's excellent. It's looking forward to it. Exactly. Okay. And uh, let me see. Uh, there is a, a tidy models, by the way. There is a tidy models on sensor uh, data. It's in the early stages. Okay, so there's still some some way to go, but there's some tidy uh, models. So I'll try. Okay, for next time, I'll try also to see if I can, you know, show you. Some of the things that, the, that they're doing, especially with, uh, I tried it with a customer churn. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Okay. And, and one of the things that I want to mention is that uh, usually when we don't take account the sensor data, uh, some of the probabilities that we get, uh, usually they are, you know, overestimated. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you take in account the sensor data, then you get a more, a, a, a real, a more real picture of what your, you know, what your situation in terms of probabilities and predictions are. So it's something that it should, you know, it, it should be, it, it should be accounted for. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. All right. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I know that survival analysis is always, you know, it's always something. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I like this stuff. I, oh, yeah. I, I think when when you think about it, uh, a lot of data sets are durations and and censored mm -hmm. be, because they're durations. A, a lot right. of things that uh, people think are time series are really not correct. Time series. They're events with uh, a, a time stamp, and the distance between events is duration. So this is relevant. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah in so many contexts and, and the graphic showing a, a confidence interval or a credible in, interval is, mm -hmm. um, is important um, mm -hmm. to, 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 to be able to say, you know, given this sample of data, what does that say about the wider population? Maybe. And and that the the um, the interval grows as the um, uh, as as the time goes to the right it is intuitive. I, I think that makes sense. Right. Um, uh, pre precisely, uh, Jim. That's one of the assumptions. Okay. Yeah. That you know when you have those two groups. Let me go back. Okay. Yep. Let's put it here. Right. When you have those two groups. Usually, there's an assumption that that gap is proportional. Okay, yeah. that that there's going to be you know like like a widening you know of, of it. 
sometimes you get uh, graphs that are kind of concave, okay? And that uh, doesn't, doesn't, you know, doesn't, um, uh, it doesn't conform uh, to that assumption, okay? So usually uh, visualization is, is something that you should always do to make sure that your assumptions are, are valid, okay? At least visually. Yeah, so, yeah. So, ne so next week, and I think the, the maybe the business question we get to mm -hmm. is, yeah. is if my decision maker or stakeholder applies a treatment, mm -hmm. uh, how much is the benefit and, and who benefits? Correct. Can, can we quantify the benefit of a, of a you know, uh, stepping in with these, say, patients or these machines, if we introduce an improvement or a remedy, right. can we quantify the benefit to the yeah, population? You can, yeah, you I, can even quantify the benefit of uh, a machinery, for example, lasting longer than another, yeah. a different yeah. type. Yeah, you can quantify uh, if uh, I don't know, some fuel that you use, uh, it's benefiting for some machineries more, uh, more than others because they last longer or save fuel consumption more than others. You can use this kind of analysis for- Also, also look, look, look at it in a practical way. Uh, for example, when, you're, uh, when you buy a product and it comes with a warranty, for example, okay, let's say a three-year warranty and, and, it, and it's given by the manufacturer without you you know, put in more dollars, for example, because you have also extensions, right? But that's another thing. But that warranty uh, usually comes, you know, that period of time comes with a study, okay? What is the probability that after X amount of time, that product, you know, is going to uh, go defective and how many people are going to be, you know, returning or, uh, you know, get, getting a, you know, a refund or anything like that? You should have a study because if you are blindly <laughs> putting those warranties there, you know it could bleed you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Especially for expensive, you know, I, I'm not I'm not talking about things that we you know customers buy, but you know industrial kind. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yellow iron, you know, uh, big big dosers and all that. Uh, you should have a study that's saying, okay, the probability of this, you know, going 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 out is going to be I don't know, a three years or whatever. So you yeah. make your decision based on that. Yeah. So, so I can I can tell you in the equipment business those, mm -hmm. those the, the models exist, but right. um, in, <laughs> eco in in econometrics the assumptions are just a little bit different than right. the hypothesis testing being made here. Right. And and one of the things that comes to mind. Uh, right away uh, at mm -hmm. the end of your talk, you mentioned p values and multiple. Mm -hmm features. Right. Do you remember the Bonferroni correction and how p-values have to, in, yeah. in, in effect, shrink because you've got many hypothesis tests, you know, when, you, when you really think about it. And, and that sort of shrinkage on a, on a big model um, is, 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 is pretty dramatic. So there's, mm -hmm. there's, there's other ways of thinking about interactions and significance Right. Uh, on the on the Bayesian side or with uh, say simulation that are more robust I don't um, know. In, yeah, in the way yeah. in the way Bonferroni is more robust yeah. right uh, uh, let me tell you yeah uh, let me tell you what, one of the things that we're not seeing here is for example mm -hmm. in terms of business is uh, you know how much risk you know does this decision you know have you know entails so Bayesian what it does is that it gives you that information that the frequencies cannot give you, okay? Because three frequency is just a point, right? You know, yeah. you're just making a decision, yeah. okay, the, this is significant, the, yeah. this is not, okay? Yeah. But in the Bayesian, you have the probabilities, you have the distributions, and then you can say, okay, if I give, you know, X amount of years of warranty, what is my risk? In other words, what is my, mm -hmm. you know, my, 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 my downside, my downside? And Bayesian does that, yeah. Yeah, so basically, uh, it's time to event analysis. So, yeah, um, time to event. Yeah, that's the correct uh, terminology. Survival, because it started with the you know, yeah. medical profession, but it's time to event, really. Time to event, yes. Yep. Okay, so okay, thank, thank you, you very much. Okay. See you next week with the second next part. Week.
Yep. Yeah. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Bye now. Okay. Yeah, Take bye care. Bye. Ciao. Bye bye. <laughs>